Hey everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, this is part two of building our API. And in this video, we're gonna move away from the basic web server. We're gonna talk about the database stuff, which means we're gonna be dealing with diesel. Now, if you haven't done anything with diesel before, that's all right. I'm gonna go through most of the stuff here, but they do have a really nice tutorial on their website, which you might wanna look at as well. All right, uh, you need two things before we get going. You're gonna need SQLite 3. Uh, that's going to vary depending on the operating system that you're running. Uh, if I type SQLite 3, it's going to take me here. Uh, and if yours works, awesome. If it doesn't, then you need to install it. So I'm not going to go through how to do that. Uh, I'm just going to go on to do the diesel stuff. So if you haven't installed SQLite 3, go ahead and do that and come back. All right, so let's do cargo install uh, diesel command line interface. And mine's gonna just ignore it because I already have it installed, uh, but yours will probably take a minute or so to do that. Now, we are going to use an environment file and make sure I'm in the right place. Yes, uh, no, yeah, we need to go to, I think I need to be, yeah, I need to be in actual demo here. Uh, yes, all right, good. Uh, you are going to want to create an environment file, and this is where we're gonna put the name of our database. If you were doing something like a Postgres database where you need a login and password, the environment file will matter a lot more. It's actually really important to put the stuff in there because if you're gonna push it to GitHub or other places, then you don't want to have your hard-coded passwords and everything up here when you're actually connecting to the database. So uh, what we're gonna do down here, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, create this, don't uh, touch.env, and you'll see that pops up here. And I am going to, first of all, I'm just gonna put that in there and I'm gonna call it uh, database URL and I'm gonna call it appdb, okay? And once we do that, we can just close that and not worry about it again. All right, so with diesel, we need to set up, uh, we need to set up diesel first. So once you've got the command line interface installed, you can just do diesel and set up. And what happens when you do that is you get this migration folder here. And right now you're gonna see nothing in it and that's okay. Uh, we haven't created any tables or anything like that. So everything that happens in here is going to be the, it's going to my you can roll back your database to an earlier version or you can roll back stuff to an earlier version basically what we have is we're going to have a file that creates the database and one that rolls it back so let me go ahead and generate one thing for you here uh, this will be uh, diesel migration and generate links and this is going to be the name for our table so in the database we have these two tables we've got links you're going to see an up and a down. Okay, so the up, all that's going to be in this case is it's going to be your pretty much your database table. You're defining the database in this case. So I can do create uh, table links and ID uh, integer. So this thing, depending on what database you are using, is going to be different. As you can tell, I am the world's greatest typist. Okay. Uh, not null, no, uh, not. And last one is going to be date created and text not null. All right, so. SQLite is pretty simple. You really just have text and integers and booleans and there's five different data types. If you're doing something else, you would probably not use text for date. You'd actually use date because why would you use it? Um, why would you not? Uh, for the down, uh, we're gonna do uh, drop uh, table links, okay? So this is just gonna drop our table, uh, which is basically how we would downgrade this database. Say we, we migrate, we create a new change, we're gonna hit another folder here. Uh, we could use this to go back or uh, we could use this to create that same table again, 
All right, so right now I actually don't need these anymore. I can go ahead and close them. Uh, and what you want to do is you actually want to run the migration. So it's always going to take your latest migration. Uh, what you'll do is you'll do diesel migration run, and it will run it. And when you do that, you're going to get this schema, and this will pop up in here. So this is a, a Rust file, and this is what you're going to be using in order to interact with the database itself. So you can actually see this, and I'm using DB browser here. So if I open this up and I go ahead and take a look at where's my stuff here? Ba -ba 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 tutorials. Nope. Projects, tutorials, demo, demo. Open that up. You're gonna see links and you're gonna have all those uh, there and we could go ahead and look and of course there's no data in there. Yay, we've got a database. All right, so let's go back. Um, now we need to figure out how to get this to connect to Rust. And for some people, this might be a little bit tricky, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make some structs. And you actually end up making three different structs by the time you're done. So I'm going to make this full uh, this file here. I'm going to call this models. Okay, and we're going to use this in just a minute. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and get all of the diesel stuff in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say diesel, and we're going to use, in this case, I think this is the latest version. Not 100% sure, but I think it is. And the features we're going to use are SQL Lite, and we are going to use R2. D2, which I'm not going to talk about that at the moment, but we will get to that very soon. Uh, we also want to use .env because we are going to use that to load in the database name. And we're also going to get cert because this is going to help us uh, deal with our uh, JSON data. Because remember, we're going to be sending everything. Oh, sorry. Back that up. Um, so derive, right? Yes. Uh, so derive and third uh, JSON. Okay. I think that's everything I need at the moment. I uh, I will go ahead and do a cargo. Uh, build here and let that uh, run in the background for a little bit because we've got another 50 packages to install. Uh, and I'm going to kind of talk about the different working parts here we got. So the environment file holds the name of the database that we have created. And so when I ran the migration stuff, it, it, it pulled that from there and it actually uh, is going to go ahead and create that database for us. Notice it named it out DB. The schema is what we're going to use in Rust in order to communicate uh, with the database itself. It's kind of, uh, it, this is giving you what the database looks like according to or the table in our database. Okay, uh, And then we have these, which are the actual SQL -like, uh, it's the SQL stuff that's going to create the database itself. So these are what get run. These are, S these are the SQL files or SQL files uh, that get run. And this is where we're going to put the models that are going to mirror both this and, of course, this, which matches. So this and this are the same thing, essentially. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. We've got the schema that matches up with the uh, stuff we used here to create the actual database. This we don't access. This is just used to create the database itself or create the table in the database, sorry. Uh, and then here, what we're going to do is we're going to add some tables and or we're going to add some structs that we'll, that we'll use to interact with our tables. And we're actually going to create a few of them, which seems weird at first, but it will make sense of why we do that here. So let me deserialize and serialize. And we're also going to use create 
schema, and I'm going to pull in everything from there. Okay. All right. So uh, what we've got here, first of all, is the we're going to um, drive. Oh, actually, just realized I can just do derive and it works. All right, good. Uh, debug, uh, serialize, deserialize, and uh, queryable. This will be something we'll use later on. Uh, and we're going to create three structs. And these three structs are going to be named link. Okay, I'm not going to create it quite yet. And we're going to create another one called uh, link new. And link new is going to need a lifetime annotation. And the last one we're going to create is struct link JSON. So I think this is for anybody who's done anything with an ORM and, for example, Python and SQL Alchemy, make it insanely easy. With Rust, though, you don't have the ability to not define certain fields. Okay, so what we actually end up with is we end up with a struct that is going to contain the full features that we need, the new, which is going to contain some of the features we need, and the JSON, which is going to have even less. So this will have all four fields. So all four fields that we have in here, we're going to end up with all of those. Let me close these really quick. While this one, we're going to only have three of the fields, and this one we're going to have two. Why are we going to do that? Well, this is the one that mirrors the database itself, right? And the others are actually going to be, well, the next one, the link new, is going to be the one when we create a new entry into the database, we are going to exclude the ID, and we are going to let the database itself increase the ID. So if you take a look back at that up.sql file, you're going to see uh, here, you know, this is my primary key, so it's going to auto increment for me. That's exactly what I want. I don't want to have to actually figure out what the last, uh, the highest key is and then increment it myself. So this is going to let us do that without having to put in the key itself. Now, the thing is, I do need to associate this with the table name and links. And I think I can create that one. And we're going to keep um, we're going to add insertable here. OK, good. All right, so this is just going to be uh, these. No, nope. what do we need? Yeah, we need these three here. Okay. All right. Now the thing with this is the way we're going to use it, and you're going to see this later on, is these are actually not going to be strings. They are going to be. Well, they're going to be strings, but they're not going to be this type of string. They're going to be lowercase string, or in our case, a string literal, right? That's the correct term for that, I believe. Um, so uh, we've got that one. And then this one is the one that we are going to send to the uh, send to the database. So this is what when I send a link into the database, it's going to come and be transformed into a link JSON. Now I probably could have written JSON link, but I feel like having them all start with the word link just makes more sense. You name them however you feel like, whatever makes you comfortable, makes you all warm and fuzzy inside. Okay. Um, boom. And I do not need queryable on this. OK. All right, so we've got uh, all the tables in here. And hopefully, you have kind of an idea of how these uh, are going to be connected. At the moment, we are not using any of them. We're going to do that in just a minute. Uh, that will be in the next video. Hopefully, once we start using them, you'll see why we need these 
uh, three separate things here. Let's make sure, yep, good, that's all ready to go. Uh, up, yep, we're all good. All right, so we, now we have created our models. We have three different models, and we have uh, set this up for our migrations in case we change things. We've got the environment variable, yay. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is pop back in and actually learn how we can connect to this database itself. All right, uh, cool. If you got any questions, just let me know. Leave them in the comment section. If I've completely botched something in any way, please let me know as well. Uh, otherwise, I will see you in video three.